Oh my, I am so happy to be back with you today. Hello, uh, my name is Scan Cocaine, and this is my channel all about knitting, yarn, a hand dye yarn, and it's been so long. Oh Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. What an amazing, let's see, two months now, I guess it's been since we have chatted. So much has happened. I missed Rhinebeck this past weekend and never again will I miss Rhinebeck. I, I'm going to, next year, I have it all like in my mind planned. Um, I'm going to drive up in my car, pick people up along the way. I'm going to stay in a house with an entourage. I'm going to go to all the events and I'm going to do all the things. I'm just tired of depriving myself. Like I deprived myself by not going one, but even when I've gone in the past, it's never been, you know, like I've been there with Becky and it's been a four hour ride during Rhinebeck, like from 11 to two, and then we had to get back on the bus and get back on the train. I am not doing that again. I am staying there and I want to have a car because another thing is waiting for Ubers and taxis and trains and planes and all of that. I am just driving up. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but I'm driving up and I will have a car with me so that I will not be trapped, isolated, in a hurry, stuck, not, not ever again. Anyway, that's the plan. Where have I been for the last two months? Where have I been? Well, so full of myself. My whole family got COVID, but I was of course holding strong and I was so superior in my mind that I wasn't going to get sick for some reason. I mean, I had been fully vaccinated, fully boosted. So I'm like, I'm also the healthiest person in the household. I mean, I exercise the most, I have the best diet. I mean, I just feel like I had an edge. Yeah, I had an edge. It took me longer to get sick, as in I was the last person to get sick, but I got it and I got it. I really got it. I got it to the point where I still probably am gonna have to stop this, the camera from rolling and have coughs. I am now still like, I'm too, well, like a month and a half and I'm still not back to myself. I'm still not 100%. I don't know. It's odd. It's weird. <coughs> I don't know if you heard that, but it's like a not a good one. Like there's bong water in there or something. I don't know. Something bad's going on in there. Being sick for as long as I was sick, I did get a lot of knitting done. So I'm going to show you, do I have anything that I completed? Yes, I have some things that I completed. One of the things is my second pressed flower shawl. And it uses my dream Dream DK, which is yak and yak and what else? Yak and silk. So this is an undyed yak and silk base that I have and it is supremely soft. I would say it's, it's pretty up there with cashmere, the combination of the yak and the silk together. And it's got that natural color, which is sort of um, khaki, not khaki, not camel, but because like that's camel, but and my DK in the uh, first bloom colorway, which is um, has a lot of these. It's essentially cream, but it does have a lot of 
speckles and sort of surprises. As you knit along, there are surprises along the way. So what it did was it created an essentially cream colored uh, flower. But then there's these pops, you know, like pops of pink and all of that. I modified the pattern and did an I-cord edging on the bottom. And if you remember on my other pressed flower shawl, that was my succulent color and my iris color. I ribbed the bottom of it. So this time it was an I cord. So that's done. Lovely shawl, really a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, it's a dense fabric, it's mosaic knitting. So it's, it's knitting and slipping and knitting and slipping and it's kind of doing two rows twice. Uh, but you kind of get in the rhythm of it but even though I've done two of these I still never really found it to be like incredibly intuitive like I would stare at it and I'm like is that a pearl or is that a knit on the other side it's hard to explain but it never became intuitive for me but I just loved the finished product so much I just persevered and um, basically followed the pattern except for the bottom um, I cord. So that was the first thing that was completed. You know, I, I did feel really sick while I was sick, but not too sick uh, to keep knitting. I, I did knit a lot. So I'll try to get as close as I can to you to, that, to show off that beautiful stitch. Anyway, so that's one. Um, I finished a pair of socks and they are just, was just in the mood to do a DK weight pair of socks. So I think I'm following the Summerly Thanksgivings sock. And, and like always, I will link everything that I can link down below underneath this video in the show notes. So there'll be links to pretty much everything I'm saying and I will link yarn if I do have availability, if I know that I can get it to you at some point, I will link the yarn below. So I did the medium size. I believe I cast on 44 stitches. I used some of my Donegal DK I used one, this was one skein. I cast on with just a scrap of my Louboutin colorway that I had. Just cast on with it and then I immediately did the two by two rib. Did that for three inches. Did the leg, I just eyeball. I did a fish lips kiss heel, which is my heel of choice. That's what I always do. I don't do a heel flap and gusset. And then I just knit until I felt like they were long enough and um, I decreased and then did Kitchener at the end. And I've actually worn these a bunch of times. I don't know if you can see that they're pretty worn, but uh, I've been wearing them a lot with my black Birkenstock, Arizonas, and uh, with clogs and things like that. Um, I really like DK socks because I wear a lot of clogs and Birkenstocks and they just fit, you know, they just really feel like they add a little extra layer of, of comfort for me, um, padding on the bottom of my feet. So I did that. Uh, needle size, let's see. So these were DK, so I used a size US 3 for these. Okay, next finished object is I made the Sophie scarf. Which is all the rage right now. I did it out of this one random skein of hedgehog fibers. Um, what's it called? You know, it's the one that has all of the colors in it. What's it called? Tweety or something like that? I don't remember what it's called, but 
Yeah, this was a really fun project. Super fun. And I did the large. I did it on the suggested needle size. So I followed the, followed the pattern exactly. I believe it calls for a DK weight, but if you use fingering, you can hold it with mohair. And um, Let's see. Yeah, 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 it's, it's great. I might make a bunch of these for Christmas gifts because I think if you just have a random DK skein laying around, I used almost all of that DK, DK skein though, to be honest with you. I mean, every bit of it. So I, I don't know how much scrap, you know, scraps, it's maybe mainly for lone skeins, right? So, that was really fun. That was really, really fun. And I will do more of these for sure. This Tweety's nice. It's a little thin for DK. It's more on the sport side, but it's really nice. I liked it a lot. Um, it's the best use of this one skein that I had. I'm just trying to remember why I even had just one skein of it. Okay, I think that's it for finished objects for now. So the next thing that I want to show you is I went on a total cast on itis binge. I'm about to cough again. <clears throat> I went on a cast on frenzy while I was sick because I was just doing anything to make myself feel better. I was so depressed. I was so... Well, so the first thing I did... Let's see, where do I start? I started a sock out of my Ubix colorway. Ubic. I had said Ubix for a while and realized I was making a mistake. It's Ubic, and it's uh, one of my favorite uh, books by Philip Dick, who is an, um, he's a science fiction writer, and he's so fabulous. And so I, Dyed up this color, an inspirational uh, Ubic colorway. It's like a charcoal gray with lots of really pretty colors. So I did the uh, I did one crunk crunkle sock by Kay Jones of the Break Bakery Bears. So this is what the Ubic looks like. Knit it up in the crumple sock. So if you see, there's nice sort of swirly pooling patterns, which I love pooling when I do um, hats and socks. I love pooling. Not so much just sweaters and garments and stuff, but in general, I love it. And again, I just, I followed the pattern for the crunkle on the top part. Not the best thing to do a pattern sock with a, you know, kind of a really variegated sock, but I just felt like doing it. And I did 64 stitches on a US one and uh, for like an inch and a half, I did the body. Again, I did uh, fish lips kiss heel here and did my size. I wear a size eight and then I decreased and did Kitchener on the toe. So I did one, this is a hoe, but I didn't do the next one, but I think I have a cast on somewhere. So I have one, there's another one. I will get those done because I already have the other one cast on. That's the hurdle for me. The hurdle is to have finished totally a sock and I still don't have the other sock. Now, I'm also doing a pair of socks for Dave, and of course then Ben can wear them, but I am doing it out of Patton's, Patton's Croy, and I'm doing 72 stitches for his socks, the Schlips Kiss Heel. And as you see, I'm they're not identical, they're fraternal. 
but he doesn't care whether they are identical or not. He just loves hand-knit socks. And so I did like, you know, like at least three inches of the rib and then the body and et cetera, et cetera. I'm doing these on Magic Loop, which I'm enjoying. And I always get ladders up the sides, but I didn't, I didn't get them too badly this time. I mean, you can still see where I go from needle to needle. You can still kind of see that. So that's why um, I did Magic Loop on these crunkle socks because the design itself kind of covered up that weird line that I get when I go from one needle to the next on Magic Loop. Now the crunkle, I did the nine inch cirques for those. So, and I did Magic Loop for these. The thing about these is as long as, I, so what I'll do is I'll knit the cuff, cuff. Then I'll knit the body, body. I'll knit fish lips, fish lips, foot, foot, toe, toe. That's how I do them in tandem. And that's how I end up with a pair of socks and I've eliminated second sock syndrome. Because, you know, as much as I love those crunkle socks, I don't have, I would have rather had one that was almost done as opposed to me starting all the way from the beginning. So, eh, I'm not perfect, am I? Okay, don't answer that. So, the next thing that I cast on was I ordered some yarn from Creo in Chicago. Uh, she's an indie dyer there and she has really beautiful yarn and somebody had showed this colorway and now I'm blanking on what it is. It might be pink. What are those dogs? Dalmatians? I think that's what this is. I'm not 100% sure. I will link it below the proper uh, colorway, but I got her sort of thick and chunky Aran weight. And I'm use. I think I'm doing the Manhattan hat out of it. And I'm knitting it inside out. <laughs> so I'm knitting it like this is facing me. I'm knitting it inside out so I get the the ribbing that I like. You know, I told you I like the wrong side of my knitting better than the right side. So it, this one is sort of is good either way, but so I'm starting to decrease here. I only have a little bit of yarn left, so I'm a little bit concerned that I may run out of yarn, but it's already long enough. So if I do run out, it's okay. Anyway, I love this hat and I love this yarn. Love it. Okay, so there's that. I could get this done like right now while I'm talking to you, but will I know? Okay, what's next? I made kits up in my shop out of my worsted weight and I made the blue, um, it's Mountain Mist by Tim Can Knits, but I call it the Blue Ridge Mountain Mist because I live in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Let's see which side. I don't think I did short rows because it didn't call for it. So what I'm gonna do is I, sometimes I will do short rows lower down in the back of the sweater so that it dips down like really low in the back because I like everything front short in the front and long in the back that's what I like so I did a roll neck these are kits that I had in my store I don't have any right now but I may open the pre-orders again I'm not sure kind of want to move on um but I do love this um I did a roll neck a folded neck I mean and then right away you can kind of see that you can pretty much see where the increases are. They'll, they'll kind of disappear a little more once I uh, block it. But this is my chambray color. This is my denim color. This is my blue ridge color right there. That's blue ridge. And then this one is deep in the forest. And it has all kinds of really, really beautiful, beautiful colors. 
yellows and greens and so many pretty colors in there. Just We tried to make it look like a forest. So it's lovely and I'm doing the small size. I'm doing it on size six needles because I'm a really loose knitter and that's what gauge I got. Do you think I actually checked the gauge? Didn't check the gauge. I don't do gauge swatches. None of that. I just go with it. And if the sweater fits me, that's a bonus. If it doesn't, I give it to Marcella. If it's too big, well, then I'm going to show you what I have that's too big that I started and didn't gauge. And you're going to see what I don't even know how this is going to turn out. I have no idea. So, so you see, I'm sort of cruising along. Um, this is super washed, so it's going to really grow when I'm done. Um, this is how much I have of this skein. Okay, that's Blue Ridge Mountain Mist. I started the lapis top. And I am just like, oh, this is, well, how can I explain what's happening here? It has you do a provisional cast on, and then it has you knit this feather and fan pattern, go all the way up. And then when you're done with the sweater, I don't want to tell you too much because it's a paid pattern, but when you're done with the sweater, you're supposed to, you know, pull out the provisional cast on and then go. So the sweater goes, knits, is knitted up towards the neck. And then you pick up and go the other direction to finish the ribbing on the bottom. Well, I didn't want to do that because I'm a rebel and I wanted to just knit the ribbing at the bottom, switch needles go up, you know, you always do a smaller needle for the ribbing typically because it's always kind of a little flared out and you want to come in a little bit, but more using a smaller needle doesn't really make it cinch in. It just more makes it even with the rest of the typically stocking at. So I should have done what I was told because she's the designer and she designed the sweater, but I did not. And so then I continued on with the feather and fan part and then you introduce the black and I kept going and then you split and this is the back. But you see how big this is, right? <laughs> Could turn out great, no idea. But um, then you pick up the front, and then you piece it together, and then you got a sweater. Um, so we're somewhere about there, I guess. I think it's supposed to be like a dolman, you know, it's supposed to flare out, and so. But I stalled. Because knitting with black, in this just stocking that stitch, knitting with black, it just isn't that fun. That's my feather and fan colorway. Unnamed. I haven't named this yet. If I end up liking the sweater and end up making kits, then I'll, then I'll uh, name it. But the black is uh, jet, and this is jet. It's just totally black. You know, maybe there's a little tonality in there, but it's essentially black. Okay. What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, I started, now this is freakishly small. This is going to be Marcella's. But I started another flax because that is my go-to by Tin Can Knits. And I had two colors that were sitting on my shelves and I thought, oh, this would make a great striped sweater. Look at that. I've got this dark color, which is chalkboard. And then I have this other color, which I think was my rain cloud. And I was like, oh, this would be such a nice striped sweater. That's what I'm gonna do. So I started it, and the minute I started it, I realized this isn't gonna work. They're too close. And if you see, they almost had no difference 
Like you can barely see. Look at the back. You can Every two rows I alternate those two colors. And sometimes there's a real stripe there. You see that? But not really. Like it's just really fady. It, it's, it's very subtle. So I'm going to finish this and then Marcel's going to get it because this isn't going to go over my hide. This is just not going to go. It's just not going to happen. Uh, again, you don't know what you're going to get until you wash and block um, superwash yarns. They grow a lot. Most of the time they grow in length, not in width. Um, but I still have a feeling that Marcel is going to want this. And it's black, so she'll like it. Um, what do I say about it? I, I did the medium, but I didn't gauge. So it's just like... Yeah. Um, let's see, what needles am I using? Size 6. I do 4s for the ribbing and 6 for the body of the sweater. That's pretty much what I do. Okay. Uh, last, last whip that I want to show you is... The Wingate shawl out of Lana, Lana, the book 52 Weeks of Shawls. I, I was intrigued by this because it looks like a ruffle. And I thought, oh, that's so architectural. And I just think it's so modern and cool. And I had, you know, a, a couple skeins laying around of my tobacco color in the Surrey. And then I had, and just wait till you see the skein. The skein is like on the verge of exploding. And then I also had some of my, DK, my Royal DK in the tobacco too. Look at this. This is the skein I'm using right now. I put it on my Nancy's Knickknacks, uh, my electric ball winder, and it turned it into a flying saucer because I just couldn't be bothered. I turned it on high and I walked away from it. And when I came back, it was a flying saucer. So it just, well, you see what it did. So at some point I'm going to have to cut it and redo it, but right now it's okay. So, um, so this stunning beauty is, you know, hard edge on one side and it's, you decrease every other row on the other side or every fourth row, something like that. Um, once I read the pattern once, I was like, okay, I got it. And I just started dreaming of all of the, um, I, I mean, I can't even show you how it's going to look when you wear it, but um, I just started dreaming about all of the things I wanted to make. Like I want to cast on the full amount of stitches and the, in black and then just don't decrease on one side, just have it be a rectangle and just stop after maybe like that much. And then I've got this really cool kind of accordion modern sort of like thing to wear with my black coat and my camel hair coat um, this winter. Um, yeah, and I have, you know, all my friends, not all, I have a lot of friends who are architects and they would love this. You know, they would love this. Cut. So I, this is very inspiring to me and I want to make other things. I'm going to run out of yarn. I don't have any more than this, so I'm not going to be able to finish this, but that's okay. It was more of an experiment to see what the pattern, like what made that pattern like that. So, um, yeah, I love it. I just think it's so great. That's it. That's all I have to show you today. So I want to do, um, starting to shine, I'm sure. So I now want to talk a little bit about, um, things that have been going on with me and, uh, just a few, just chat a little bit about, okay, computer stopped. Okay. 
So, oh, no, I do want to show you some things that I am really excited about, and I actually need help figuring out um, a good pattern for, oh, wait, no, I do have one more thing to show you. Look at this really great bag that's stolen, uh, stolen moments, minutes, stolen minutes. She gifted me this bag. I sent her some yarn and she gifted me this. It's not beautiful. And her signature uh, lining is always the stripe. There's always this great to put, you know, what stitch, stitch markers or whatever you need on, on this. So, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, I still sick. Anyway, Skein Yarn Shop who I just love them so much. They're so friendly. And I bought a, a skein of a sock set from Freckled Whimsy. And so I always like to have a knitted, um, I always like to have a, so a striped sock on the go. And why I wanna show you these I might have shown them to you last time. I don't remember, but this is how far I am. They're covered in hair. Sorry about that. And this is where I am. So far, they're matching up, but they're about to not match up because I broke the yarn because there was a bad spot in it. I had a knot or something, and I so I broke it and started again, so they're not going to be ideal. But if you see, so these are um, 58 stitches. I did the body. Uh, is, you know, really long body, and then I'm working on the foot there. But if you see, my heel is, this is the Magic Heel by Autumn Acorn. So wherever you decide you want your heel, you do a ribbing. And that's what makes, that's what makes that heel. And this is, why this is great. First of all, my normal Fish Lips Kiss heel um, you have to know where your heel is. I mean, you have to figure out, this is where I want my heel. Okay, you, but this one, you don't have to be so precise. You just, because you're going to knit that for at least four inches. So your heel's going to go somewhere in there. But here's the great thing. When you do fish lips, if I, I would need to have a contrasting color, which this came with, but I didn't want to do it. Um, a contrast in color or else you get an interruption of the striping pattern and I didn't want to do that this way there's no interruption you see and this is really a great heel instead of doing like tube socks for kids do the magic heel instead and not only will that fit better than just a regular tube sock without a heel but it also means that, you know, you really are getting a heel. It'll fit better in their shoes, but then they can, you know, the more of that ribbing you do, the longer they can wear those socks, which is what you want. You want to be able to wear, you know, you make socks for your kids. You want them to be able to wear them as long as possible before they grow out of them. So, yeah, the, I would absolutely recommend that heel. 100% recommend. Now, we dyed up this yarn. We had the, our iconic colorway, which is black with white speckles. And we did a new colorway called Fashion Week. And I love it because I love navy. I wear mainly black, but I do love navy. So we did, we did a blue in that same sort of idea where, and it's, it's blowing out. It's way, way darker than that. Let's see if I can, it's more, it's showing up more on that. This is looking lighter for some reason. Whoops, well, there it goes. It's lost to me. Um, but this is so pretty. I just have to figure out what to do with it. Um, if you have any suggestions, uh, let me know. Something, maybe something petite knit. thinking of a turtleneck. I love turtlenecks. I'm thinking a turtleneck, something, I wear navy with black, 
I know that drives some people crazy, but I actually do that. Um, yeah, so this is DK. So that's on my radar of I need to cake these up and cast something on with this. Okay? Okay. And I'm going to make more of these Sophie scarves too. Okay. So let me see. Is there anything else I need to tell you? You know I didn't go to Rhinebeck. Um, I was going to do a live with Leslie, uh, but I was still coughing all the time. And I... <clears throat> I still have to stop and cough and everything, and so I am morbidly terrified of doing any kind of live with her over, you know, to announce more winners and stuff for the Summer of Stripes. And thank you for everybody that um, did participate in the Summer of Stripes. It was fun. I mean, we weren't the best hosts. She was better than I was, but, um, you know, I just, I got sick. It just messed everything up, but I thought everybody did such beautiful projects and I sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of perfect palette mini sets and brights and pastels. I mean, I'm still getting those out. We're still dying those. So help yourself. If you want one of those, be my guest. I can get one. I, I mean, who am I? It's not creative to dye the same thing over and over again, you know, but who am I to say you can't have something? I mean, I'm not one of those like, well, you know, this is a, you know, we're just going to do this for a little while, then we're going to stop, we're going to stop dyeing it. You know, I get, I get that, but I don't really understand, um, I just lost my train of, train of thought because somebody just called me. Now, I thought I put my phone on airplane mode. I did. So why did my phone ring? That's really strange. So is air, I guess my watch is not on airplane mode, and that's why. All right. Hold on. I'm going to put my phone, my watch in airplane mode. Okay. Now we're good. Okay. Of course, I won't forget I put it in there. So what was I saying? What was I talking about? I don't remember. I don't remember what I was talking about. Anyway, um, no, I have completely lost my train of thought. It's just gone. Um, what's going on? Okay, let me just talk about life stuff. So if you're just here for the yarn, thank you. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Hope I inspired you a little bit. So next, I have a tangle here, you see, tangle. Uh, so a little bit of life stuff. Uh, ben is in his senior year of school and we're, we're figuring out college. There's a program here in Virginia that you get two free years of school at the local community college and then if your grades are good you're automatically accepted into any state school in Virginia. UVA, Virginia Tech, Wema Mary, um, really good schools. Um, but it's not that, it's not, it's, it's a program that they're really pushing to sort of make there be less Student loans, you know, um, just it's a smart thing and they really pushed it this year. So Ben and all, pretty much all of his friends, and we're talking, you know, really good students, they're all really con seriously considering um, going to Virginia West, uh, no, New River Community College for those two years to do their core work, you know, like their math and stuff that they and English that they have to get done and then transfer into uh, you know another college and that's where they like you know Ben could transfer into UVA and then he when he graduates he would get the degree from UVA even though he did the first two years and that makes a lot of sense especially if you save two years of tuition so we're you know we're thinking about that he's also thinking about going to FIT in New York which um, then I would have to get a little Pierre de Terre up there 
So I'm not complaining about that. That would be, you know, pretty nice. Um, Marcella is in the marching band. She's doing amazingly well. They won everything this past weekend. They were competition, state competitions. They came in number one. They won every category. So we're really proud of Marcella. She pays the trombone. She's just adorable. She's with the high schoolers. There's five middle schoolers that are in the marching band from middle school, and she's one of them. And um, I think she's going to be in marching band for, you know, the next, after this year, the next four years. She really likes it. She likes the camaraderie. She's now learning how to play the trumpet. Um, she already played the cello. And then she's, um, she's just so good at all of that stuff. So really proud of her. And, you know, she has to keep her grades up or she can't be, be in there in the marching band. So that keeps her grades up. It keeps her focused. So that's really good. Um, Let's see. We are watching um, Dahmer, which I hate. I hated watching it. It's really good. I mean, it's, it's, I would say, if you liked horror, it's a great, entertaining, well-done story. But I was just like, meh. It's just, you know, I lived through it. I lived through it. Uh, it was happening, I believe if not right before, but when I lived in Chicago and I remember driving, you know, we took the train to Milwaukee and one of the things we did, we drove past the house he lived in with his grandmother. And so I don't really need to see that again, but I, we just decided to stop watching Dahmer and watch the actual documentary where there's a recorded the recorded voice, him inter, being interviewed in prison and so telling his whole story and it's pretty different than the dramatized you know Hollywood version it is different and some interesting things you know that I it was interesting there were things I didn't know like how he he killed someone but that he didn't kill again for like nine or ten years and he was really upset that he had done that. Yeah, I'd hope so. But I mean, I just have a, I'm learning a little bit more about him. I don't sympathize or empathize with him at all, but I do find it interesting, you know, how someone gets there. And of course, you know, he was found not guilty. Wrong, he was found guilty. I mean, he was found not insane. So he's put into the general prison or whatever. But frankly, he was insane. <laughs> he was. But I think everybody just wanted him to go to prison, you know, just letting nature take its course. But he was insane. And he really needed help. He needed a lot of help along the way. And he didn't get it. And uh, the system kind of failed him in a lot of ways. But again, I'm not empathizing or sympathizing. It's just... Where do people, like what, you know, a lot of us had had hard childhoods, you know, maybe not overt abuse or anything like that. Because I was watching the show with Ben and I'm like, God, what is it about what his childhood? You know, he said, he was neglected. I'm like, mm, I was neglected, but I didn't turn into a serial killer. I mean, I was neglected in that my parents were hardcore career people. My mother left for work at nine o'clock in the morning and came home at nine o'clock at night. My dad was, you know, working for the governor of Virginia as a cons bank consultant and consultant to banks all over the East Coast. And he, he was gone a lot and he was, you know, always trying to do stuff and had lots of careers and extra things on the side, like he had a skincare line and all this stuff, just constantly doing stuff. And so, and I was an only child, so I spent a lot of time alone. But so I, you could say I was neglected. I mean, your parents are going to screw you up. And then when you have kids, you're like, I'm not going to do that. But then you screw them up in your own special way. So that's just kind of how it is. But I'm not, you know, him being gay or whatever, that's not going to make someone turn into a serial killer. I mean... Or, or not liking that you're gay or your parents don't like it. Well, how many people have to deal with that? 
doesn't turn them into homicidal murderers. So, I don't know. I think he had some serious mental illness, obviously. So we're watching that. Um, we watched, what else did we watch? It's like, I forget everything we did as soon as I push record on this, um, on the camera. And I just made a mistake, I need to fix it. Um, oh, I will say one thing about these socks that I'm doing here, these Pat and Croy socks. I am in absolute agony with these socks. This yarn with knit, what is this? What are these needles? They're the really, really super sharp ones. What are they? Not Knitter's Pride, not Chiagu, not Addy, not Licka. It's another brand. I don't know. This is the cord. The cord's blue. Do you recognize it? Um, this yarn plus super sharp needles is absolutely, absolute hell. Absolute. If I'm not looking at my knitting, if I'm not looking at it, I split every single stitch. And I don't like to look at my knitting when I'm knitting, unless it's complicated. But if it's just going around and around and around, bad combination. Anyway. So I, I just don't feel like knitting these right now. Let's see. What other shows did we watch? Dave, yeah. what shows have we watched recently? What? what shows have we watched recently besides Dahmer? Uh. Oh, I know. Never mind. Goodbye. I know. I remember now. Um, we watched, um, uh, now I can't remember the name of it, but it was about this Florida community, old folks, Florida community of what it's like to live down in this perfect like heaven community for 65 and older, maybe. I don't know. That was a very, very interesting um, documentary. I think, you know, I always thought that it'd be really fun to be around everybody my age. And these things like you never, I was a cheerleader, but if you'd never been a cheerleader and you really wanted to be a cheerleader, you might say to yourself, oh, I want to be, you know, I, I'm almost, you know, I don't know how much more time I have left. I would love to do something like that. And so they had things like you could be a cheerleader, you could play the trampoline, a, a tambourine, you could be in a band, you could do anything you wanted to at this resort for elderly people. And I thought, well, that sounds really interesting, but I realized that that's not really natural, that we're really supposed to be around all age groups. You know, we're really actually supposed to be sort of a multi-generational home where the grandparents live and the grandkids live and everybody lives together that's kind of a natural thing because then you see aging and then you are around the dying process and you can see it and you're not necessarily as afraid of it instead of putting people away in facilities or communities where we don't see we don't really see what happens you know and i don't think that's you no know, i think we're supposed to be around all different age groups and we learn like I learn from kids and younger people and I learn from older people and it's just that's how I think it's supposed to be but uh, okay that's all I can do right now I, I don't I just don't know I can't maybe I'll drink some coffee and then get back on here and talk some more but right now I, I just I'm, I'm completely brain dead I don't have anything here there's nothing here right now Okay. Well, it's nice to be back and I hope you are loving life and comment below and tell me what you're knitting and what exciting things you bought at Rhinebeck. I will be there next year. There's no doubt in my mind. And if you want a room with me in the house, comment below. We could get a list together, we get a giant like 10 bedroom house or something and then I'll have an entourage. Okay. 
So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.